China's chip shortage continues. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, has a term for difficulties that constrain China's economic development: choke point. Right now, without a doubt, the most critical choke point for the CCP concerns chips. An overseas Chinese recently shared on social media that a central-level Chinese enterprise asked his friend to procure 20 chips made in Japan. The CCP is trying to employ the tactic of the human wave attack, in which each overseas Chinese is asked to purchase 20 chips, thereby building up a large stock of chips like quote ants moving stuff bit by bit. However, the requested Chinese was worried about breaking the law. The state security officials in China reassured him that it was for purely civilian use, and that the chips were only for cameras. Since the import channels were banned, they have to come up with this method. We won't discuss if this is legal, but it is evident that the chip shortage is posing a challenge for the CCP. The media in mainland China has reported that more fake chips have recently started to circulate in China's electronics sector. They fall under two main categories: old chips recycled from electronic waste and defective products eliminated from the regular production line. Beijing had hoped the new U.S. president would ease up on this front when he took office. However, the bad news keeps coming. On July 18th, Radio France Internationale reported that Beijing has been pressuring the Dutch government to allow Chinese companies to buy the EUV lithography machine. It's the primary product of ASML Holding, a Dutch maker of chip equipment and a photolithography giant. Such machines are crucial to the manufacturing of advanced microprocessors. The CCP wants to provide the 150 million dollar machine to domestic chip makers so that smartphone giant Huawei and other Chinese technology companies can reduce their dependence on foreign suppliers. Nevertheless, ASML has not provided even one machine. That is because the Dutch are withholding export licenses to China under pressure from the U.S. After all, this equipment would not work without U.S. parts. According to U.S. officials, the Biden administration has asked the Dutch government to restrict sales due to national security concerns. This position is a continuation of former President Trump's policy. In May 2020, the U.S. Department of Commerce amended the Foreign Direct Product Rule to prohibit chip makers from selling chips made with U.S. technology and equipment to Huawei without a license from the U.S. government. This ban covers almost all high-end chip makers in the world, including TSMC. In 2020, China accounted for 17% of ASML's overall sales. However, what China had access to was an older generation of machines. Without ASML's state-of-the-art machines, experts say China's chip makers would not be able to make leading-edge chips. It is estimated that China will need at least another decade to reach ASML's technology level. Bloomberg said it would be a pipe dream if Huawei's high silicone intends to build a chip processing plant inside China that does not include U.S. equipment and technology. It needs the EUV lithography machines made by the Dutch company ASML, a prerequisite for next-generation chip manufacturing. Huawei's high-end flagship P50 series will be released on July 29th. It is reported that the new model may be equipped with Snapdragon 888 series 4G chip and Kirin 9000 5G chip. At a time when 5G chips cover the cell phone industry, why would Huawei purchase a 4G chip from Qualcomm instead of a 5G chip? Although the U.S. government approves Qualcomm to supply chips to Huawei. It stipulates that only non-5G chips are permitted. Huawei's cell phone market share has declined rapidly. In the first quarter of 2021, it has fallen out of the top five in the global market. Also, in the first quarter, Huawei announced the business development of quote smart pig farming. In an interview with the media on February 9th, 
Ren Zhongfei, Huawei's founder, said, quote, We can survive without relying on cell phones. Ren's speech is clearly meant for the Chinese people, as the party will not be happy with such an outcome. The Communist Party's top leader, Xi Jinping, has often repeated the slogan of, quote, strengthening the country through science and technology. Many of China's top provincial leaders now have a new title, Director of the Science and Technology Innovation Commission. The new focus is on breaking through a number of choke point key technologies. It is a new phenomenon in the Chinese officialdom. In June, according to Bloomberg, Beijing is pushing a key initiative aimed at helping Chinese chip makers overcome U.S. sanctions. According to people familiar with the matter, Chinese Vice Premier Liu He will be the main person in charge of the, quote, chip confrontation program. The program has set aside $1 trillion in government funds. A portion of these funds will be invested jointly by the central and local governments in a series of third-generation chip projects. Chinese officials have not confirmed the news. However, on June 19th, China's Sina.com covered the news. It reported that due to the story about China's chip confrontation plan, the entire semiconductor and components sector in China began to rise sharply after the A-share market opened in the afternoon. Up to now, China's chip self-sufficiency rate is only 15%, including less than 5% for automotive chips. The general manager of China's National New Energy Vehicle Technology Innovation Center said that foreign companies control almost 100% of the production technology of the auto system chips. Research by Huatai Securities shows that in the chip industry, only one domestic foundry in China, SMIC, is currently keeping up with the advanced process. But compared with Taiwan's TSMC, there is still a technology gap of three generations, or about six years. The upstream of the semiconductor materials, equipment, design software, and other links are mainly dependent on imports. According to industry consultants, China's core chips, such as MCU, microprocessor, and memory, are incredibly lacking. Its domestic market share was only 3%, 0%, and 1% respectively in 2020. In the context of strong capital injection by the Chinese government, is it possible for China's high-end chips to rise rapidly and reach a high percentage of homegrown production? Let's take a look at the story of the Chinese chip giant, Tsinghua Unigroup. On July 9th, Tsinghua Unigroup made a significant announcement that it has filed for bankruptcy, reorganization by one of its creditors, Huishang Bank, due to its inability to pay off its maturing bonds. Founded in 1999, Tsinghua Unigroup is a semiconductor group wholly owned by Tsinghua University. It's a major public research university in Beijing and a member of the C9 League of Chinese Universities. According to the official website of Tsinghua Unigroup, it employs more than 40,000 people worldwide. It's the world's third largest cell phone chip designer. It accounts for more than 20% of the global SIM card market share, and it's one of China's leading cloud service providers. The sources said chipmaker Tsinghua Unigroup carries $31 billion in debt. In 2019, the OECD, released a report analyzing the world's 21 largest chip companies. Comparing the amount of government support as a percentage of revenue, four chip companies in China ranked high, with both Tsinghua Unigroup and SMIC receiving more than 30% of their respective annual revenues from government funding. Tsinghua Unigroup once had a surprising amount of capital. In 2013, Tsinghua entered the chip industry by spending $1.78 billion to acquire Spreadrum Communications, a cell phone chip company that was delisted in the United States. In 2014, it bought another cell phone chip company, RDA Microelectronics, for $910 million. It also was delisted from the U.S. Tsinghua Unigroup's boss, Zhao Weiguo, packaged and merged the two companies to form Unisoc. 
Unisoc became the world's third largest cell phone chip company behind Qualcomm and MediaTek. Later, Tsinghua Unigroup bought shares in three Taiwanese packaging companies and a 51% stake in Hewlett Packard's Wasan Communications and an almost 100% stake in French smart chip company Linksins. In 2015, Zhao said in an interview that he wanted to buy TSMC. He said he would win over MediaTek because Tsinghua Unigroup was loaded. <laughs> 一个投资者,一个炒股的,就是嘛,不要我老早骂了。对,开玩笑,这个十六纳米制成,不是用嘴巴说的,用钱来买的。From 2010 to now, the number of mergers and acquisitions of the Tsinghua Unigroup exceeded 60. The amount invested has exceeded RMB 100 billion, USD 15.44 billion. Along with the large number of mergers and acquisitions, Tsinghua Unigroup has invested a massive amount of capital in building factories in the cities of Wuhan, Chengdu, and Chongqing, respectively. The total investment in the three cities is nearly RMB 300 billion, USD 46.3 billion. Although Tsinghua Unigroup has received so much government support, Industry insiders believe that it has not been successful in manufacturing top-notch products at the forefront of technology. The Nikkei Asian News reported in November 2020 that the construction of Tsinghua Unigroup's flash memory NAND project in Chengdu had stalled in the early stages with no indication of when it would resume. Tsinghua Unigroup has been operating with high debt. From 2017 to 2019, the company's consolidated statements show a debt ratio of 62.09%, 73.42%, and 73.46% respectively. In 2020, as of the end of June, the debt ratio was 68.41%. However, the chip industry is a long-cycle, high-investment, high-risk industry. Starting from 2019, the external financing environment of Tsinghua Unigroup has tightened. Multiple factors such as lower than expected investment returns have triggered the company's debt crisis. However, it does not affect the wealth of Tsinghua Unigroup's boss, Zhao Weiguo. Zhao currently holds 70% of the shares of Jianken Investment Limited, the second largest shareholder of Tsinghua Unigroup. To be fair, Zhao is not the first one to leave the entire debt to the state after hollowing out the enterprise. Is it possible for Tsinghua Unigroup to recover after its bankruptcy reorganization? It looks tough. Tsinghua Unigroup resembles a snapshot of the CCP's chip dream, expecting to buy a chip empire through money. In China's manic and corrupted world of fame and fortune, it is simply too difficult to expect such a crowd to devote their attention to high-end research and to tackle cutting-edge technological challenges.